you to do so. Well, it's our new month, Bazalwane, amen. amen. Um, it's our new month and it's, it's, it's our norm. Even though for the past two months we've been dealing with one and the same theme, but in this new month we are introducing a new theme. This is one of the subjects that are very close to my heart and it's also somewhat directly connected to the theme of the past two months. And because these are the things that God uh, is emphasizing in my heart, reminding me of them. Amen. Amen. And as a matter of fact, because it, it is also our spiritual legacy. These, these are the pearls that I was, I was taught by my spiritual father uh, uh, himself. Amen. And, and, and forgive me because I can't help it. These things, they just flow out of me. Amen. So let's, let's get into it. We'll be focusing on, I think this is the... Okay, people are excited, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Our theme will be based on one of the books I wrote, Shining Poverty, right? Shining Poverty and, and to shun, meaning, you know, to avoid, to detest, to hate with every fiber of your being, amen. Uh, uh, this is what we'll be focusing on, but our subject for today will be breaking the cycle of poverty. Breaking the cycle of poverty and and. And I don't want you to quickly close your heart and, and think that, oh, well, um, Fundisi is not talking to me. Poverty has got nothing to do with money. Amen. Believe you me. It, 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 it does include that, but it's not only about it. I, I know many poor people who, are, who have money in their big bank account. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> So this has got nothing to do with money, believe you me. Don't limit it to, to money. I'm going to show uh, you why am I saying that. And yes, the better part of it has got to do with uh, money in one or the other, but it's not limited uh, uh, to money. So let, let, let me just maybe before we even get into it, st start by saying many of us as we are seated here, we, we grew up under different conditions, different situations and circumstances. But I can guarantee you that most of us, we, we grew up under uh, conditions of poverty. It might not be the fact that your family was, was poor or anything like that, but we grew up in environments where we were more exposed to poverty than success and prosperity. And that has a way to influence and to condition the way that we think and the way that we do things to a point that even the, the little prosperity that we were exposed to, it was not enough to recondition us and to cause us to think in line with God's plan and purpose. And, and, and even when we are adults, when we are now, you know, having our own families, we can't help it but to think the way that, uh, you know, we used to think or the way that we were conditioned to think, if I may put it like that. Are we here, Bazalwan? So, so, so we, we found ourselves in, in, in situations where um, even by the time we become born again, unfortunately, even the spirit of religion, and I'm saying the spirit of religion deliberately because uh, Christianity uh, if you want to accurately define it, you can't define it as a religion. You can't define it as a religion because it's way beyond a religion. It's, it, Christianity has got to do with developing a true and a living relationship with a living God. And that, that is not religion. Amen. Religion in most cases has got to do with just following uh, you know, rules and regulations, and that's it. And, and following rules and regulations does not make you a Christian. Coming to church every Sunday does not make you a Christian. Reading a Bible, the Christian Bible that talks about Jesus, does not make you a Christian. What makes you a Christian is, is developing a true and a living relationship with the true God, the only true God, by the way. Amen. Amen. So people will talk things like, you know, um, uh, all religions are the same. I, I can say if you want to say that, that's okay. But I don't see Christianity as religion. Amen. Amen. But unfortunately, you do find people who are religious even when they are Christians. And in most cases, you know, this is where, again, unfortunately, as I say, many of us, by the time we become, you know, Christians, we find the spirit of religion dominating in the church, suggesting that, you know, um, poverty, failure in life 
is somewhat, you know, spiritual. It can be associated with humility. It's like when, when you, you, it's almost like, you know, people suggest that you, you, you have got to make a choice between prosperity and God. Between anointing and God. It's like, it's almost like you can't be holy and rich at the same time. I know I'm going to offend many religious spirits as, as I'm talking, you know. And I know that some people will struggle with what I say. Amen. But, it, but it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Amen. And, and, and the way that I see God and the way that I look at, you know, Christianity and our relationship with God, it, 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 God, we don't have to choose between prosperity and God. As a matter of fact, our God is the God of success and prosperity. This now does not mean that when you are poor or whatever, when you're struggling in life, you are not accepted in as far as God is concerned. Yes, God is for everybody, rich and poor. Amen. Yeah. But God encourages also ministers to the poor so that they can get to a place where they can know that his will, his plan and purpose for their lives is not for them to remain poor and suffering for the rest of their lives. Amen. It's okay. It's fine. We'll get there. Amen. So, 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 and unfortunately things got to a place where even the devil took advantage of sometimes our ignorance in as far as these things are concerned and, and and, and even when we get a chance to somehow succeed, succeed and prosper, the devil has got a way to pull us back into that place of, of poverty. Amen. Especially in the way that we think. And, and, and the devil will, will take advantage of, you know, a, 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 our state of poverty just to keep us at a certain place so that, we, you know, we cannot fulfill God's plan and purpose in our lives. Are we together? That, that's one of the things that, you know, poverty will do, and we, we'll get into it in a minute. But the devil will then take advantage, and other people who want to oppress others, then they, they take advantage of this powerful scourge of poverty to make sure that you are going to be managed in a certain way. You know, when, when you don't have certain resources, you can be managed. Yeah. <laughs> you can be cut down to size. Okay, let's get into the word so that, you know, we can be happy and excited. Amen. But, but I know this is not just going to be a message, but it's going to be warfare. Yeah. It's going to be warfare. Let's, let's take this scripture. I'm going to show you Bible. Amen. I'm not going to argue and debate, but I'm just going to show you what the Bible says. And in 2 Corinthians chapter number 8 and verse number 9. 2 Corinthians chapter number 8 and verse number 9. It's a very simple, straightforward scripture that many people, you know, will, will, will fight against. It says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, who now? Who, who was rich? So, If we, we, we can't associate riches with God, how can the Bible says Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was more holy than us, more anointed than us, Amen. the Bible vividly says he came, landed here, and he was loaded. Yeah. It's not me, it's the Bible. But take note what it says. Then it says, yet for your sakes he became poor. Take note. Not, not so that we can all be poor together. No. Take note. That through his poverty, the poverty that he had to take when he came, in the same way that he took our sins. The Bible says that you, you, that is you and I, through his poverty, right? Right? might become rich. Amen. It's all right. It's okay. Amen. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We pray that you may speak to us this morning. Renew our minds through your word. Transform our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Poverty is a sketch. Very serious one. 
You know, when we are talking about a scourge, we are talking about something that you are using as an instrument to punish somebody. Something that you are going to use to cause great trouble for somebody. And give, if given a chance, the devil will always use poverty to create great troubles in your lives. My spiritual father again, as I told you earlier, loved saying these powerful words. He said, you and I, if we are honest with ourselves, we know that our problems are not the problems we say we have. But our main and our major problem is that we are poor. We don't have money. He goes on to say that most of our problems, if you can have money, they can be solved. Even the Bible says money answers all things. Are we together? Now poverty is a very challenging scourge all over the world and also as it is evident also in our continent of Africa. It's very evident. We cannot hide from that. Many people, you know, who are serious, many families, many nations, governments, organizations are doing whatever it takes. As a matter of fact, poverty is prioritized, especially here in, in Africa. That you know what, this challenge needs to be dealt with because if we don't deal with it, it's going to work against us and we are not going to develop as a continent, we are not going to develop as a nation, and of course we are not going to develop as communities, are we together? Amen. There are plans, there are strategies that are in place so that this scourge of poverty may be eradicated totally. All of us, we want that. And sometimes these plans, and even as an individual, it can be a, an uphill battle. And I'm going to show you in a moment. It's go, it can be quite a challenge. It's not, it's not an easy thing. It's almost like glue that sticks on you, that you are trying to sort of get it off your life. Have you seen that uh, movie, Spider-Man movie, where there was that black costume that was sticking, and, and he was trying to and it kept on coming back and coming back and I love the fact that you know uh, they found a solution that he had to heat an iron somehow on another iron just so that that costume can get off of him amen and sometimes many of us we need to sound the word of God most you know in our ears each and every day because if we don't the spirit will stick and once it sticks <laughs> you are in trouble are we together? Amen. That's why then the Bible draws a very beautiful picture in the book of Zechariah chapter number one. And I'm hoping to kind of talk, you know, this morning just so that we get this to sink into our system. The Bible draws a very beautiful picture in the book of Zechariah chapter number one. And I love this scripture because this is one of the scriptures I use as a sounding, you know, iron <laughs> in my life to remind myself of what poverty is all about because this this can be quite a very serious spirit amen and the Bible talks about how God was remembering his people his nation and he was speaking you know uh, through his prophet and he was saying my people will will spread through prosperity so when when God wants you to prosper it's not so much so about you but it's also about him fulfilling his plans and purposes in your life, in your family, in your community, and in your nation. And he was saying, there's something great I want to do in and through my people, and they are going to spread, and specifically, he says, through prosperity. So in other words, I'm going to bless them. I, I, I want to see them prosper. Why? So that they can break out. They can spread out. They can be found in every city, every nation, so that they can possess their land. Are we together, Barcelona? But then he says, 
Uh, this is the prophet now. Then he says, but he saw four horns showing up, right? He says he, he sees four horns showing up and he asks, because this is now in a vision. He asks the Lord, now, but now what are these four horns? And, and, and the voice says to him, now these are the, are the, are the powers uh, that has been assigned, I'm paraphrasing, by the kingdom of, of darkness, specifically in verse number uh, 20. Let me put it this way. Verse number uh, yeah, 20, he says, um, no, no, not, not verse number 20, but verse number 19. The Bible says, and I said to the angel who talked with me, what are these? So he answered, these are the horns that have scattered Judah, right? So in other words, there are, there are forces, there are powers of darkness that will be always assigned to scatter God's people. So that whatever they want to achieve, whatever that they want to do, it's like us now. Amen. Uh, the spirit of poverty can attack us, you know, aiming to destroy the vision that God has given us. The vision that brings us together. The vision that wants us to, you know, work together to achieve something that God has ordained for us. But the, the, the horn, if I may put it like that, can attack us to scatter us so that we don't stay. Amen. And, and that can be seen as the spirit of poverty. Are we here, Barcelona? But then he says, uh, and, and again when he repeats describing this uh, uh, horn, he says, uh, uh, and I said, what are these coming to do? Then he said, uh, uh, these are the horns that scattered Judah so that no one could lift up his head. And that is exactly what the spirit of poverty does. It, it, it looks at you just, just to manage you when you try to raise your head in your family, when you try to be the, you know, better than what you have already experienced in your community. For an example, if you have not been exposed to anything greater that is burning in your heart, these horns are looking after those who want to change the status quo. So in other words, even as a church, even as a church, if you want to become a church that has never been in that community before, the, the horns will be looking after such people that when as a man of God you are responding to the call of God and you are saying, I am responding to the call of God and I want to pursue what I am seeing with my eyes. I want to call labor with the Lord to build that which has never been built before. There are horns that are that are looking at you saying, you, 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 you cannot go beyond this line. You, you, you cannot go beyond this number. You cannot build anything greater than this in your family when, when, when there's no education whatsoever and you are the first one to attempt that degree, to attempt that. The horns will be after you just to, just to, just to, just to look after the one who is trying to lift their head. And that's why many of us, we have got to be intentional. We have got to be very serious. Because then the devil will always try to come at you. Especially if you want to dream different, if you want to have a different vision, a bigger vision than what you have experienced. I'm telling you, if you are going to be the first to buy a car in your family, you are going to have it. That's why sometimes it's a game of to and fro. The one minute you have it and the next you don't have it. Why? Because the devil wants to pull you back and cut you down to size and say, not in this family, not in this community, not in this nation. But the devil is a liar. We are here to break that cycle. Are we here? Amen. Now you need to understand that the devil will always try to suppress you. He will always try to keep you at your minimum. To cause you to be average. To be like everybody else. And take note, this spirit of poverty will not just work in and through you, but also in and through those who are around you. Because if the devil cannot break you, he will use others to break you. What do I mean? When, when you dare share what is burning in your heart with the person seated next to you, <laughs> and they are not as vigilant as you are. They are not as intentional as you are. They, they are going to be the voice that the devil uses 
that will suggest that you you, you don't don't try that don't don't we we've, it doesn't work here you you, you know you, you hear us as 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 black folks as black folks saying you know you know runa moko Yeah, we, 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 we say things like those that we have never seen something like this here in this family. So if you try it, you are going to get hurt. What do they say? It's going to end in tears. They are, that is what they are suggesting. Amen. That is what they are saying. And when they are suggesting that, they want you to accept the status quo. And, and, and say, this is it, you know. Uh, I, and unfortunately, it happens to us even as Christians that we are going to accept that it means we were born for poverty. It means this is the will of God for us, but the devil is a liar. Let, let, let me backtrack a bit and show you God's original plan for men. Since from the beginning when God created you and I, the Bible says clearly in Genesis 1 and verse 27, it says, and God created men. And what did he do? The Bible says he blessed them. Take note, it was never God's intention for us to live under the curse and the scourge of poverty. So from the very first moment God creates you and I, what does he do? He blesses us. What is, what is to bless? To bless it is to empower, to prosper. So in other words, we had the DNA of success and prosperity on the inside of us as created and designed by God. Dr. Bill Winston defines a blessing as the anointing through which divine favor flows. So in other words, God imparted on the inside of us that wherever we go, we, there should be God's divine favor upon us. It's just that sometimes we don't take advantage of it. Why? Because the devil has caused us to look at ourselves as people who are born for what we have already experienced and nothing more. Somebody, you know, one of my favorite definitions of a blessing is it is the impartation of the supernatural power of God into a human vessel through God's delegated authority. Because take note that even God himself, when he blessed them, he said, he spoke the blessing. He declared, so it's not about giving them something tangible, but it is about what he pronounces over his people. So even when God is seated in heaven, that's why the Bible clearly tells us of how he has anointed priests, in other words, pastors, leaders. He has anointed them. Why? The Bible says so that they can bless on his behalf. So it's in the word that are being released and imparted into your spirit so that the DNA of success Success and prosperity can be reactivated on the inside of you and you can begin to think the way that God has I mean Barcelona we need to understand that when the Bible tells us that God blessed us the Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes rich and it adds no sorrow God did not intend for us to live sorrowful lives and I am here to declare that your sorrow needs to come to an end that your sorrow needs to come to an end that your sorrow needs to come to an end why because the Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes rich and earth no sorrow. So when God blesses, he empowers us to prosper. That's why the, the book of Deuteronomy says, it is the Lord who gives us power to generate wealth. Are we here, Barcelona? So we have got to take advantage of that power. So when he created man, he even puts them in the garden. And the Bible says he, he allowed a river to flow in that garden. And, and he says, you know, that river parted into four river heads to make sure that, that that environment where man lives in, it is an environment of flourishing and an environment of success, an environment of beautiful things. You know, it's almost like God wanted to condition man to think nothing but success and prosperity. So in other words, when I look around, I see trees with fruits. I don't know a tree that withers. I don't know a anything that calls that is called poverty I don't know lack why because there is sufficiency and abundance that is the kind of an environment that God wanted us to grow up under and once you are conditioned like that you you refuse to settle for anything less you see when when God put Adam and Eve in that environment the river flowed and it, it, it had to make sure that as they work 
the garden it's not going to be hard it's not going to be a painful toy it's not going to be under a curse it's, it's not going to be blood sweat and tears it's not going to be a struggle but they will know nothing that you know when i dig here water will come out when i plant a seed here the tree will grow and and they, they didn't know anything anything about trees that are withering about a tree that will grow and not bear fruit and if you grow up under that let me tell you there are other people in their lives you know things that are your prayer item things that are your goal things that are you will go to the mountain and fast for 40 days and 40 nights it's there normal when when you are still thinking about a car it's almost like that's that's something you know way way it's not on my list i'm not dreaming to it you know you know how we talk about dream cars there are people who don't have dream cars because a car it's 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 nothing but a resource to them it's something that it's a must have it's not something i can dream about it's nothing it's like it's a it's a given and and that's where god wants to take us as a lot where we will we will not struggle to think that is it whether or not the will of god for me to have it no you cannot be thinking like that as a child of god it's not about whether or not it's the will of God it is clear in the scriptures that God wants to give us all of these things richly and religion does not want us to think like that the devil is using the spirit of religion so that we cannot think like that we have got to get to a place you see I always put this example and say when God said to Adam and Eve don't eat of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil he was protecting them from knowing something that will make them struggle to accept and embrace his will because their eyes were opened and all of a sudden they could see poverty they could see lack they could see sickness and disease they could see death that that's why the bible says the first thing that happens is that you know when they eat the bible says their eyes were opened and they were naked and, and and when God shows up and he says Adam where are you and they say to God you know we, we heard your voice walking in the garden and we were hiding because we were naked and ashamed and God says to them but who told you that you because you were naked all along you were you were naked all along but I was covering you with my glory and if you say you are naked so in other words something must have happened that lifted the covering of my glory upon your life that's why the Bible says all have sinned and have fallen short shot of the glory of God so the death that Adam and Eve suffered in the garden was way more than just the physical death of getting into the grave but it was when the devil reduced the kind of glory that Adam and Eve carried so that they could they were so much covered by the glory they could not see their shortcomings they could not focus on the fact that they are naked you see sometimes when you are too much conscious of your lack in your life you become so conditioned to your lack and your poverty and it is going to be difficult to come out of it and when God is trying to show you his glory you can't see it because you come into his presence you are thinking about the, the fact that there's no bread at home who told you that you don't have bread who told you that you are not working who told you that you are unemployed that's the struggle that we have in the flesh today that when God was to take us from glory to glory all that we can think about is that oh God I know I'm not working oh God I don't have money oh God my business is suffering oh God instead of just allowing the presence to show you what is available in glory what is available in his presence what is available what has it already been established for you I want to get to a place where I can get into the presence of God and I can say oh God once I'm in your presence it does not matter whether I drive or not but I know that in you all things you know that's why the Bible says seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness and then it says all else shall be added unto you I want to live in that space where I don't see lack but I see provision I don't see hunger but I see food I don't see I don't see emptiness but I see God filling me up I see God providing for me I don't see my needs but I see Jehovah Jireh I don't see my lap but I see El Shaddai the God who is more than enough I can be assured in my spirit I can be assured in my spirit that when I am in his presence 
God is going to show up when I'm in his presence. I don't have to work and, you know, painful toil just like how God ended up releasing and pronouncing a curse to Adam and Eve. And he said, you shall work hard, you shall toil, you shall sweat before you eat. And that's where many of us are. We believe more in working hard and sweating. And we want to pain to have pain before we can just enjoy one meal at Wimpy. You know, I got a wake-up call. I have a friend in Ghana. I'm sure you know him. I got a, I got a wake-up call when he spoke to me about something that I, I want to, I'm using this example to draw a picture. I'm not in any way trying to, you know, um, uh, uh, bring him down or whatever the case may be. He says to me, I'm believing God for a visa to America. That's what he says. And he says, in my country, we need to take 40 days, at least 40 days and, and 40 nights of fasting, believing God for a visa. And I'm thinking, I, I had a visa 10 years ago to the US of America. I didn't fast. I, I just took my documents, went to the office, but, but for them, it's a, it's a struggle. It's almost like they, they, they've got to work hard. They've got to sweat. They've got to be hungry for 40 days and for, just for them to get a visa. And sometimes this is how we are conditioned as God's people. We think, we, 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 we think, we think, we are so much in poverty in such a way that just for one breakthrough to happen, we feel like fighting Huzug. Finally, I must bleed when Jesus did the bleeding for us. We feel like we have got to sweat when Jesus did the sweating for us. All that God says is believe in what I've already obtained for you and recondition the way that you think. That's why I'm saying poverty is, is, is way beyond just the lack of money. But it's a spirit that when it sits on you, 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 you can't think beyond what you have already experienced. You, you, you can't think, you can't see yourself. You know, it's almost like you, you feel, you know, you feel, uh, how can I put it? You, 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 you feel like you are doing something wrong when you are believing God for just an increase, M7. As if we are you are bothering God when 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 you when you say God I believe you for promotion oh God you know I'm believing you for a better job it's almost like you are you are cursing God it's almost like it's an abomination when God is seated in heaven he's saying come on my son come on my daughter there is something greater there is something there is something more there is yeah. Yeah. that is God's original plan. I'm left with just a few minutes because I want to close. Now, 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 now the origin of poverty does not, be, God is not the source of our poverty. But the minute Adam and Eve failed to obey God's commandment, sin came in. And when sin came in, God pronounced death. And that death, as I say, is not only about being buried. No. It's about falling short of the glory. Our nakedness revealed that when God shows up, we can't look at him and what he is bringing, but we are looking at what we lack. Spend, can you imagine, spend 40 days and 40 nights praying for a visa. Or, or just praying for bread at home. Why? Because we are too conscious of what we don't have. And we are not conscious of the God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above we can ever ask or think. That when you look around and you say, I I I'm looking for a house. Listen, your house is in him. Oh God, I'm looking for a, a, a business and you are, you are even going to forget about God and, and, and work so hard to try and get what God can get to you just like it. That's why many of us, we will not trust God even with our finances. Why? Because we feel like we have got to provide for ourselves. You see, when God says we must give, he's not looking for our money. 
Silver and gold, he says, belongs to him. Amen. He says, if I was hungry, I was not going to tell you. Because the kettles in the thousand hills, they belong to me. So when we give to God, we are not helping him with anything. Yeah. But giving is a sign of trusting him. Yeah. That God, what I have is insufficient. What I have is not enough. As a matter of fact, I'm grateful for the little that I have. You see, what, you, you can protect your money from everything in life. This is the only advice I can give to you now. You can pro protect your money from anything in life, but don't protect your money, not just your money, your clothes, your car, your risk. Don't protect them from God. Because there's nothing you have that does not come from Him. There's nothing I have that does not come from God. So who am I to try and... Who am I? I want to close. I want to close. Now, there are different kinds of poverty. I want to close quickly. There are different kinds of poverty. There's absolute poverty. There's relational poverty. And many others, but I want to zoom into this one, which is very much dangerous. Because there's also what is called generational poverty. So this is when somehow there's a spirit that has infiltrated the system in your family. So that whatever that you are facing in one generation, you see many of us, we are not poor because we are lazy. But it's because of a system we were born into. And we were not intentional about breaking away from that system. Now, generational poverty lasts from one generation to the next in such a way that um, others will talk about you know generational curses and whatever the case may be and and others struggle to believe in something like that you see let me let me let me just warn you as a christian because sometimes we use scriptures that we don't even apply in our lives people who say no i'm already born again you know uh, i've been redeemed from the curse but if you are not intentional about your redemption let me tell you it's, it's Bible. Let me tell you. The Bible says, when demons come out of a person, after a while, they will come back and see that where they came out, is there anything new? So yes, when you are born again, you are delivered, you are free. But if the mindset of poverty is still there, that's why the Bible says we must not be ignorant of the devil's devices. Yeah. Because when he comes back and he still finds you still thinking the way that you used to think before you were saved, you still very much believe in poverty more than you believe in success and prosperity. The Bible says these demons will call others. And the Bible says your situation is going to be worse than what it was before. So now it means we have got to be radical. Because this generational poverty becomes a cycle that repeats itself. The very same things that you saw in your previous generation is the same thing that you are going to see in your current generation. That if uh, there was nobody who was educated, you see, that's why I, I once said this, I can't remember whether I said it here at church, that sometimes you need to pause and take a stock of the family you come from and begin to tick in your life especially if your your family remains unsaved and you are saved and begin to have a checklist of what they have and what you and of what maybe they don't have if you 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 don't have exactly the same thing you need to tick if they have a car you need to see what 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 am i driving if they have a house you need to check where am i staying how am i living compared to where i come from because sometimes if you are still on average at the same place as they are, <laughs> you are still within the system. Especially if you are a child of God, sometimes you need to take a stock and say, I've, I've, got, to, I've got to do better. I've got to believe God for more. I've got to, God, God did not save me so that I can remain so, so broke and poor and remain the same ever again. That is not God's, that is not God's intention. 
And you, you need to take stock and sit down and tick and say, and say, and be honest with yourself because let me tell you, if you are not going to be intentional with that, let me almost prophesy to you free of charge. Your children are going to experience the very same thing. And there are certain demons that you must kill so that, you, that your children are not going to have to face exactly the same devils that you were faced with. I am here to provoke you and say you better break this cycle. You, you, better, you better not... Sometimes there's a We are so patient with it and we don't realize that actually you are not the project, but your children are the project. The reason why the devil wants to keep you where you are, it is because he wants to keep your children. That's why the Bible says the just men, the just men. The chastity, do you know? Do you know when when are you righteous? It begins when the Bible says when you are able to leave an inheritance. Listen, it does not say for your children, it says for your children's children. Why? Because God is a generational God. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He will single out Abraham. And if you are the Abraham in your family, you need to understand it's not only about you, but it's about the Isaac in your loins. It is about the Jacob in your loins. It is not so much so about you. And sometimes you have got to be radical. Abraham, step out of your family. Step out of your country. Step out of your community. You find us in Pinoni today. It's not because, you know, God just excited us with another campus, but sometimes it's good to walk out of the environment that you are used to, that has conditioned you to think in a certain way. Sometimes it's easier so that you can see something better, something greater, something that you can believe God for. The devil is a liar. We are here to interrupt the cycle. We are here to break the cycle. We are here to declare that by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, we are interrupting the cycle. No more poverty in my system. No more poverty in my system. No more poverty in my system. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ was sent to die for us on that cross of Calvary. The Bible tells us that not only did he take away our sins, Bazalwan, but the Bible says he also took our poverty so that through his poverty, that's why do not make Jesus to be poor for nothing. Do not make him to be poor for nothing. The Bible says he became poor so that you and I, so that you and I, so that you and I may become rich. So that you and I may become rich. I, 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 I was so excited when I was reading the book of Zechariah this morning. I've been reading the scripture, you know, over and over again. But for the first time, I noticed something, something so beautiful and something so glorious. The Bible says there were four horns that showed up. Yes, the Bible says there were four horns that showed up and they, they were there to suppress the children of Israel, isn't it? But then the Bible says there were four craftsmen who shows up and the prophet asked but who are these but but he says these are the ones who are coming to terrify the horns but then I began to realize that when you know three Hebrew boys were thrown in the fire there was a fourth man with them in the same situation not to entertain them in the situation but to show the devil that this fire is not going to destroy you I want to under I want you to understand that Jesus today is getting into your poverty with you not to maintain you in your poverty, not to excite you in your poverty, but one thing that he wants to do is to bring you out of your poverty. And today, I am here to declare that you are coming out, that you are breaking free, that you are cutting loose. You can never be broke anymore. You can never be poor anymore. You can never lack anymore. You can never think lack anymore. You can never think failure anymore. You can never think poverty anymore. There is absolutely nothing spiritual about poverty and lack. If you can turn back and fix your eyes on the one who died on that cross. And I'm, I'm asking for the Holy Communion, please. And that's why when Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me, we are not only remembering our sins being forgiven, we've got that covered. I'm sure many of us are walking in that liberation. We know we are forgiven. That's why we can testify, we can say, but how about we begin to, to testify about the fact that I, I, I am not broke, I am not poor, I am prosperous, I am rich, I am blessed, I am highly favored because that is exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the reason why from time to time you are going to experience 
a little bit of poverty is because the devil wants to remind you of where you are coming from. And he wants you to accept it as the status quo. He wants you to settle for it and say, in my life, nothing's gonna change. This is my portion. But I'm here to provoke you and say to you, don't accept it. Fight. Fight. Get into it crawling, but tell yourself that I am going to walk in the fullness of the blessing of the Lord. Even if it's painful and uncomfortable, that's why David, I like, I love David's confession. He says, I was young and now I am old. Listen to what he says. He says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. But he says, and his seed begging for bread. And I want this to be your confession and say, you might have begged bread somewhere in your life, yeah. but may your seed never beg for any bread in the name of Jesus Christ. Tell yourself that I, I, I'm not, I'm not, you see, you see, there are, there are other places where certain things are no longer an issue. It's no longer a prayer item. I, I, was, I was talking to um, a friend of mine in Canada, you know, he was telling me about something that, they, and I'm thinking, dude, what you are telling me now, which is normal to you, it's our prayer. And to him it's normal. Same God. Same blood of Jesus. And God is able, you see, Jesus said, the poor you shall have always. But it does not have to be you. It does not have to be you. You just tell you just tell yourself that devil find another candidate. I'm not going to be an example of poverty. No, 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 no. In the same way that you don't have to be a Judas. In the same way that you don't have to be a Judas. I don't have to. I don't have to. I'm not going to accept. Not me. Find another example, devil. Find another one that you are going to use. But not me, not me. I'm, 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 I'm going to fight. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to fight the devil. I'm going to show him how much I believe in success and prosperity for myself, for my family, for my children. And I'm going to show, send him a strong message. The back stops here. The cycle is broken now. It is interrupted now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this bread which is your body Lord Jesus for this blood that flowed on the cross of Calvary as we partake of it this morning we do so in remembrance of who you are and what you have done for us on that cross of Calvary that you gave us the forgiveness of our sins the healing of our bodies mighty God the breaking of the spirit of poverty upon our lives you took away our death and gave us life in the name of Jesus. And today we stand, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, in appreciation and in remembrance of the fact that you became poor and you took our poverty so that we may become rich as your children, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ that poverty is not our portion that the yoke of poverty is broken off of our lives, off of our families, oh God, off of our children, almighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of poverty, Father, in the name of Jesus is removed in the name of Jesus and never to come back anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you that we are free to believe you, oh Father, for what, oh God, in the name of Jesus, you have called us for, what you have ordained us for, for we know that you said in your word, you have got good plans for us. Plans to prosper us, plans to cause us, almighty God, to succeed and prosper, to give us hope and an expected end in the name of Jesus. Therefore, we declare in this place, mighty God, that we are blessed coming in and going out, that we are blessed in the field and in the city, that we are blessed in our careers, we are blessed in our businesses, oh Father. We declare, mighty God, increase in our finances. We declare promotion, oh mighty God, in whatever positions we occupy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare that, oh Father, we shall not remain at one level, mighty God, forever in the name of Jesus. But, oh God, chains are broken, limitations are broken, ceilings are removed, oh Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. It does not matter, mighty God, where we are. We know that with you all 
all things are possible. That Almighty God in those environments where they are saying of your people, they will not taste that promotion, they will not taste that open door, they will not access it. But we thank you that right now you intervene, you turn things around in the name of Jesus Christ. You give them master what they said, what the world said they could not have, they could not access. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we declare in this place a breakthrough, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you that you rise up as the craftsman, Lord Jesus, even in this place, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, even, oh God, to terrorize the horns that have been released from the kingdom of darkness, oh God, to keep us broke, to keep us as failures, to keep us, almighty oh God, as those who will never succeed, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you praise, we thank you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Thank you again for watching this message, and I hope it was a blessing to you. Please do subscribe to our channel and click on that bell so that you can receive all of the notifications whenever we are loading new messages. And if you have been following us and you have fallen in love with what we do here at Builders Church, why don't you become part of our Builders community, especially if you are far away from any of our physical campuses. And I promise you, it's going to be a great journey together. God bless you.